Another game, another loss. As the Sharks have now lost eight straight. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Locked on Sharks your first listen. Probably part of the Locked on Network. We cover your team every day, even when they've lost eight straight times for the fourth time this season. Uh, even when Alexander Barabanov finally scores a goal, but then leaves the game when he's hurt. Even when your top six forward starts the game on the fourth line. So if you want to be an everyday, all you have to do is just follow wherever you get podcasts. Or you can watch this on YouTube or do both. Both is great. And today we're going to discuss William Eklund's promotion to back up into the top six among the living. Um, The Sharks losing eight straight and where that puts them in the race for Macklin Celebrini. Spoiler, things are looking really good right now. Um, We're going to dig into the numbers behind this game. And then we're going to check in on some of the prospects who are in the playoffs and kind of where they're at and who we might get potentially get a chance to see um, a sneak peek with on the Barracuda before the season's over. So uh, before we get into all that, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Right now, new customers uh, get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com, locked on. Uh, FanDuel.com slash locked on, excuse me, to get started. Make every moment more. All right, um, we'll start with with the the big picture news. And tonight was a great night um, for the old Tankathon because now we had some everything. We had a lot of things kind of go the Sharks' way tonight. Um, Chicago has now won two games in a row and are six and four in their last ten. The Sharks lost, of course, six to three to the Dallas Stars. Um, there's a seven point difference between the Sharks and Chicago. Actually, there's a closer gap between Chicago and Anaheim than there is between the Sharks and Chicago right now. Um, beautiful. What we love to see. Um, doing some funny math, or again, I'm not a math guy, but. The Sharks' magic number to kind of clinch that spot is 14 points. That's a combination of points of losses, so two points per loss, and Sharks and Chicago wins. So if the Sharks lose seven more games, they're going to clinch that number one spot. Um, seven games and 11 uh, with 11 to go. Combined with whatever Chicago does. So um, looking really good for the Sharks to have uh, the best chance to draft Macklin Celebrine. And other good news. The Pittsburgh Penguins won against the Hurricanes. Um, that combined with a the Calgary loss to the Blackhawks now puts Pittsburgh in the 11th spot on Tankathon. Now it is points... Per game, they still need a little bit of work uh, right now because you have Calgary at 71 points, uh, Pittsburgh at 72, Buffalo at 73. So, uh, and then you have the Islanders at 75 points. So, need we basically need Pittsburgh to jump Buffalo or have one of the either like Islanders, Minnesota, like one of those teams kind of come back to the pack here. Um, so, right now, Pittsburgh. According to Tankathon, Sharks have Pittsburgh's pick at number 11. Pittsburgh does have two games against Columbus coming up. So uh, on Thursday and then on Saturday, they play uh, the home and home with them. Uh, So things, you win those, 
you're feeling pretty good about the Sharks potentially getting that 11, that pick there at number 11. So Tankathon looking good, looking good in that department. So other looking good, uh, William Eklund started the game, of course, on the fourth line for the third straight game. And I wait when they did it, I was like, okay, David, I'll give you after like three games. If Eklund's not back on the top, we're going to have a conversation. Uh, Eklund earned his promotion back into the top after the first period and quickly uh, sparked the Sharks offense with a goal and an assist. Beautiful assist to Alexander Barabanov, uh, where we see him do th- Eklund things, right? Cra- kind of crashing behind the net um, and then gets a nice little kind of squeaks a little pass out to Barabanov and Barabanov pops it home uh just such a slippery pass that's why he's slippery pete he never lets you down um then eklund on the power play uh which is you know again 12th power play 12th goal of the season for eklund um yeah 34 points this year uh in 69 games like there's, you know, six points in the last 11 games. I mean, Eklund could be looking at 40 points and, you know, basically a, a half a point per game player in his first season. On this terrible Sharks team, that is not a bad start. So um, Eklund needs to be back in the top six, okay? We, we had our fun with Eklund on the bottom. And we saw Quinn actually ride Eklund tonight a lot. He was among fours the second most ice time um, only behind uh, Mikel Granlin. So Granlin had played 1929. Uh, Eklund played 1832. And yes, I know Barabanov left this game. Um, you know, he, he blocked a shot, was wearing a walking boot per Shang Peng and Max and all the guys. Um, from the sounds of it, he may not travel. And at this point, um, I would assume his season might be just about done as we're two and a half weeks. Unsure field travel, still waiting on an update is what Matt, uh, we heard from, from Max and the gang. Um, I would assume we're maybe we probably have seen our last of Barabanov, um, which means we might see a Gushin or, you know, who will, we'll see who gets kind of the call up there um, for Barabanov, but good for him to at least get a goal and kind of that nice little send off there if his season is done. Um, so, but yeah, um, Eklund though, back to Eklund, like just, you saw as soon as he got back and like things started happening again, the offense kind of started and we saw the offense score, you know, we saw three quick goals from the offense in the uh, beginning of the second period. Um, granted, Sharks gave up some goals uh, as well. And Dallas is a very, very good team, but it was good to see Eklund kind of get back in there and, and he has been scoring very well at home, right? I think he's got six straight or seven straight games now with, uh, uh, what is it? Six, I'll pull it up right now, uh, with a point at home. So like, um, yeah, seven straight, seven consecutive games at home, three goals and five assists during that time. Um, like Eklund start, like we don't need to put Eklund on the, on the fourth line anymore. So, um, but yeah, overall, this is exactly what you wanted to see, right? You saw Eklund goal, um, Bear Benoff get one and Klim caution, man, that trade's looking again, right? Klim caution getting to play kind of, uh, top line minutes right now. Um, but, you traded Redeem Shimmick, who wasn't going to be part of your organization anymore for Klim Caution. You right? You're trying to find diamonds in the rough. You're trying to find an acorn. Um, Klim Caution looks like an acorn, looks like he fits what the sharks are looking for. And that shot he had, um, we heard it from the uh, from the Red Wings guys. Um, big guy with soft hands, and that shot right there was a absolute beauty of a shot. So um great night for the franchise in terms of uh, long-term, long-term stability as uh, it's getting very close to the Sharks, at least claiming the number one uh, spot heading into the draft lottery. Um, And that's all you can hope for, right? 
put yourself in the best position to succeed and hope you get lucky there. So uh, we're going to dig into the numbers behind this game. Look at how um, the stars kind of controlled and then really put the clamp on these sharks in the third period. Um, and then we'll also, again, talk about the prospects and who we might get a chance to see um, with the Barracuda here uh, in just one second. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. With the eBay Guarantee Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash and with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to turn your car into the mvp and bring home that win so keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guarantee fit only available to u.s customers all right um yeah, let's dig into the numbers of this game. Normally, we'll talk. We normally talk about the lines. Spoiler: the lines are a hot mess tonight. Uh, <laughs> with Bear Banoff being out, uh, with everything going on, there was a lot of line juggling. So we'll kind of look at more of individual performances there, uh, because again, um, the only like we had two lines play over five minutes together. So we're just going to look at kind of more individual performances there. So, um, but as for the Sharks team, um, yeah, Dallas is really good, man. Um, they're deep. Uh, they're good. Uh, they have a lot of scoring depth. Uh, Wedgwood is, is, yeah, well, you know, we'll see. Uh, their their goaltending is a, a little but I know Wedgwood started tonight, but um, at least now I'm worried about if, yeah, Wedgwood did start tonight. He was okay. Um, again, you trying to get some rest for Ottinger before you head into the playoffs makes sense. But 49-11 of 5v5 time, um, 66 to 47 shot attempts in favor of the Stars, 58.41 to 41.59, Corsi 4 course in favor of the stars 32 to 21 actual shots 29 to 19 scoring chances uh 13 to 9 all that in favor of the stars 2.89 to 1.47 expected goals for uh in favor of the stars so the stars pretty much put the kind of kibosh in here we saw them kind of come out kind of set the tone right and you saw a lot of opportunity this game actually probably could have been worse if it wasn't for blackwood making a couple key saves at the beginning of the third period um blackwood also didn't have the best night and had a couple goals that he probably would want back so we'll just say that's a wash right there but the the sharks definitely started much slower than we're kind of used to we that's the kind of story the sharks right has been we'll play a really good first period and kind of make you work for it and then in the second period we'll you know, things will kind of unravel uh, for us, right? Um, this one was very much a, we're going to not start the first period and we'll see you in the second period. Um, as the expected goals for, for the Sharks is 0.28. Um, they only had 10 shot attempts in the first period. And, and this was in 16 minutes of 5v5. Um, you know, like it was very much a Sharks are, we're, we'll, we'll catch up to you type of, of performance from the Sharks. Um, and it, and I think that was highlighted, especially on the power play when they gave up that shorthanded goal, uh, was kind, you know, like power play really struggles. I know they scored, uh, but that was a very like quick score from them where they don't really like, get a chance to kind of set up at any time where it was kind of a elongated power play or like a long, you know, more than that quick score. The Sharks offense struggled and that's been kind of their bread and butter. But interesting though, in, in this game where, especially at the beginning of the third period where the Sharks didn't really 
do much shots on goal until after the stars got their sixth goal and they were basically kind of put it in neutral, but just try to hang on there for knowing the sharks were not going to get three goals. And so that kind of put some lipstick on the pig there for, for the sharks, but it was very much a playing catch up. And this team is just not talented enough to play catch up against a, a team like the stars. But um, you know, at least the beginning, the first half of the second period was really fun with with all those goals scoring, um, you know, and the Sharks offense kind of came to life a little bit more in that one uh, in the second period, right? You had 17 to 27 shot attempts at 5v5, um, 9 to 12 scoring chances, um, 4 to 7 high danger chances. Like Dallas got theirs too, uh, but the Sharks at least kind of put something together uh, to make it interesting, right? If you're going to lose all these games, at least make it fun and interesting. That, that's that's all we ask for right now. Um, so as for some of the uh, specific players, again, because of how ugly the lines were tonight, um, Bailey actually led the team in course E4 uh, in his 1221. I thought Bailey had a really nice game tonight. 18 to 13 shot attempts um, when he was on the ice. Let's see, Mario, uh, sorry, Jacob McDonald was second among forwards. He only played 828, 9 to 8 shot attempts, 52.94. Bordolo uh, was third, 14 to 13 shot attempts, 51%. Corsi four. Eklund was next at 12 to 13 shot attempts, 48%. Uh, Carpenter, 10 to 11, uh, 47. Nico Sturm, 11 to 14, 44%. Cunning 11 17, 39.29%. Bear Benoff 7 11, 38%. Um, Zedlin, Caution, Granlin all struggled. They were around 35, 36%. Um, and then Zadina was uh, at 29%. The Thrun Ruta combo might need something broken up there. Um, poor Thrun has just been getting. I know they're struggling with defensemen right now, but Thrun might need a break. Might need to get sit for a game or two uh, to kind of catch up because he's he's been struggling. And you saw it again tonight, um, the Wyatt Johnson goal where he just kind of gets pushed off by by Wyatt Johnson there, and Wyatt Johnson's too good to uh, be left all alone right there. But I think Thrun's been struggling. It um, probably needs a bit of a break. I wonder if. Hoffman's supposed to be coming back here soon. I wonder if Hoffman gets returns. Uh, maybe McDonald slides back down to the blue line. Um, and then you give Thrun a little bit of a breather here. And then you can bring up somebody like uh, Agushin. That would be what I would kind of project right there. Uh, we'll see what the Sharks do. They do So they have two games, uh, two game road trip um, Thursday and Saturday before Easter. And they're home for five games after that. So um, before kind of a lot of uh, uh, road games to, to end this long, long season. So I'm curious to see what they're going to do. We know Quinn was at, he was at um, the Barracuda game on Sunday for pause and pucks. Uh and I wonder if he's might be like, okay, like let's let's see what Gushin can do, or let's see what Robbins or whomever he wants to kind of bring up. So maybe he might kind of give his um his take to to Greer and kind of they'll I'm sure they'll sit down and talk about who they want to bring up. But I would expect some sort of transaction here soon. And just remember, um after the trade deadline, you can have as many players as you want up as long as you fit under the salary cap. Um the Sharks have a bajillion dollars in salary, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, so, yeah, they could pull up a bunch of guys here. So we'll see kind of what they do. The Barracuda season is basically over, right? They're they're not going to make the playoffs. Um, and so I would expect to start to see some guys start to kind of uh, sneak in here soon. Um, you know, especially they can kind of emergency recall some of these guys, especially with some of these injuries here. I think they have uh, one or two actual recalls left, um, but you can just emergency recall guys. If, if guys aren't healthy, you can always say my coffin is just not ready yet. Emergency recall for him. Emergency recall for Barabana. Plenty of, of, of ways to get around it here. So um, yeah, sharks are bad. They've lost eight straight. Um, I'm curious if they get to 10. Uh, 
Again, they're playing the wild. Uh, wild need this right there. Hunting for trying to get back in the playoff race. They're a couple. I think they're. Ugh, it might be too little, too late, and they've lost two in a row. But we'll see. Um, and then, yeah, they're. Then they play the Blues. They're kind of in the same spot. Um, both of those teams need those points badly, and I expect those teams to uh, really try to win those games because uh, they need to. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about the prospects. So we'll dig into the prospects, what their playoff situation looks like, and who we might get a sneak peek at uh, here quickly um, in San Jose. So. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200. You can use it on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. All right, um, so we're getting uh, a bunch of playoffs, uh, you know, stuff coming up here. Um, we'll start in Sweden in the SHL, where um, playoff series have already gotten started over there. So Linko Ping, um, where Phil B says playing, Matias Havlet not playing in the playoffs. I think he, uh, he got sent down to the J20 team uh, right now. I think he's really saw his ice time decrease, and I think they want to kind of get him, maybe kind of up his confidence here a little bit. So not playing in the playoffs, but Linko Ping is down 0 to 3 um, in the series. Uh, B said did have a goal um, in his last game. And they lost. Uh, they've lost two overtime games. One game, I think, in the first period. And the second game was in the third period. Um, one of the longest games in SHL history. Uh, not the longest, but one of the longest. So, um, Link Open could be out here really quickly. I don't know if we see Beastead though, because I, I think Greer mentioned it earlier this season, where he's not sure if he's going to bring him over now, especially with how long the season's going. Um, so, and with, again, the Barracuda only have, um, so they, their last game is on April 20th, which is actually when the NHL playoffs start. So, um, you know, so even we'll see though. I mean, if, if say Linko Ping gets knocked out in this next game, I mean, that gives you like, by the time he comes over, you could be looking at one to, you know, like almost a dozen games that he could be playing. Um, maybe not a dozen, but um, let me count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So to eight games that he could be playing here um, in the AHL to kind of give him a nice little taste of it. So I'm curious to see what he does. I I think maybe they thought he might be going further, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm curious to kind of see what, the, what happens there. For Lunda, where David Ezrum plays, uh, they're up two to one in their series. Um, I don't expect him to come over right now. I, I expect we'll see David Ezrum um, during like rookie, you know, kind of training, maybe training camp. We'll see, but definitely during rookie tournament uh, action, kind of the well, I'm sure we'll see him there, but I don't expect him to come over to San Jose right now. So, um, Shifting over to North America, of course, we have Will Smith um, with Boston College, who's the number one uh, team uh, in the Frozen Four. So they get started here. Um, of course, it's not taking, it's taking forever to pull up now. So they're going to get started here pretty quickly um, this weekend, I believe. Uh, I got the bracket right now. So, yeah, they're playing on three. Yeah, so they get started this weekend against Michigan Tech. Michigan Tech is the one who beat uh, Bemidji State. Um, so, yeah, they'll get started on there. Um, and then their next game is on 331. So, um, yeah, plenty of good stuff coming here with um, with with them. The latest, the championship game for them is on 413. That's assuming that goes the very, very, very end of, assuming if they get to the, the national championship, um, all that fun stuff. The Sharks' schedule 
um, ends, I think it's right or I think it's the 18th, if I recall correctly, for the Sharks schedule. Um, so I don't, I don't know if you want to waste, if he wants to come out, I don't know if you want to waste uh, his ELC on two games. I don't expect to see that happen. Um, so plenty of conversation for for Will Smith. If you missed my conversation on what Will Smith and his ELC, go check that out. We had a really fun time with Hattie and Sebastian. So um, Will Smith, I assume he's going to play. If they get kicked out early, that's for a different day. But um, I'm assuming they're going to at least make it to the national championship because that team is an absolute monster. Um, and they're really good, and I kind of expect them to win it all. So into the juniors. So starting the O, we have, of course, Casper Halton and the London Knights. They're playing the Flint Firebirds. Uh, London Knights are the number one seed. Um, and I think they're, I think they won like they're the number one seed in the entire thing. I think they were that dominant. Um, so I expect them to have a long uh, playoff run. So I don't expect Casper Halton to see any time with the Barracuda. I think it'd be a bit of a, it would be a huge upset if they lose um, in the first round to the Flint Firebirds. I expect them to have a very long run. Um, but Sudbury Wolves. So they play the Mississauga Steelheads. Um, that's a 4 5 matchup. Um, that's, uh, sorry, London gets started on Friday, March 29th. Um, and then uh, Mississauga versus the Sudbury Wolves. That starts on Thursday. March 28th um, at 7 o'clock Eastern time. So it's 4 p.m. our time. And then Saturday uh, they play as well. So that series, though, is one to watch. Because if Sudbury gets knocked out or in that series, there's a very real chance we could see Quentin Musty playing AHL games this year. Because, again... The Barracuda don't play, their season ends on April 20th. So that would give pulling. So say if, even if that goes to game seven, game seven is scheduled um, April 9th. Okay. Um, you could see like the 12th, the Sharks, uh, the Barracuda play the 12th, the 13th, the 19th, and the 20th. So there's a potential four games of Quentin Musty. And remember, um, if he's playing on the Barracuda, that doesn't eat his ELC year. So he can, those guys, once they finish, once their junior seasons, they're allowed to go play in the AHL, doesn't eat their ELC, like, that's fine. So his ELC will slide. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, but we could see Quentin Musty suiting up um, in San Jose to play with the Barracuda. If they get knocked out earlier, there is a Barracuda game um, versus Henderson Silver Knights on April 10th. So we're rooting for these guys to go far. Um, Sudbury is a really interesting team because they're so top heavy. But if those guys, again, a lot of, you never know in the playoffs, especially in a 4 or 5 C matchup. So, um, and then, of course, our boy Luca Cagnoni. Uh, so he is playing. Um, he, they're the number two seed. Portland Winterhawks are playing the Victoria Royals, uh, of course, where um, Gan LaRock uh, was drafted, played for them. They start their playoff March on the uh, 20, Friday the 29th at 7 p.m. Pacific time. They play like all back. That's crazy. They play like all back to backs. But I guess it's, WHL is a much bigger area to cover than the OHL. So that makes sense. So um, I expect them to have a very long uh, playoff run because um, if you've watched any winter Hawks, that team is an absolute like freight train and just destroys teams. So I expect them to have a, a we could potentially have like London and Portland playing each other and, um, uh, for for the the CHL championship or at least in the final group there so um yeah so we'll see what B said again kind of see what what happens there if they want to bring him over I still expect him to kind of stay for the summer uh maybe he comes during you know rookie kind of you know, like rookie development camp, and maybe he goes back home, maybe he stays for the summer to kind of get used to it. But I expect B said, um, I don't expect him to play some games this year. I think they'll probably give him 
give them the summer off and be ready to come in next uh, and ready to play AHL games. So that's my expectations for that. But Quint Musty, again, We'll see what happens with Sudbury. Sudbury gets knocked out early. Um, could be looking at Quentin Musty playing some Barracuda games here. So um, that's going to be it for me. Be back tomorrow with another draft profile. Uh, so make sure you guys are following along for that. You can follow along wherever you get podcasts. And, of course, watch on YouTube as well. Follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked on Sharks. Follow me on Twitter at MyFryHole. Till tomorrow. Bye, friends.